All right, so welcome to part six of this series uh, about character creation in Blender. Uh, in the last video, I was doing uh, texturing, uh, painting all the different maps. And so in this video, I'm going to start um, putting everything together in the skin shader, the actual final skin shader. So before uh, I do any sort of shading, um, I usually want to set up my lighting setup uh, because um, it's just, I think it's just better to have lights uh, Kind of set up like how you want them before you do any kind of serious shading work um so for a start here i've just added a camera into the scene and uh choosing like a nice angle uh, like a lower sort of angle and i'm also um trying to set the the uh, focal length of the camera to uh something that i like so generally when you're doing uh, portrait uh, renders and so on uh, a larger uh, Greater focal length is um, usually kind of better for the for, for the portrait. Uh, characters tend to look better with a, a larger focal length, so that's something to keep in mind. So here I've set it to something like uh, eighty-five millimeters. So um, now I'm ready to start actually setting up some lights. So I'm going to split the view here, and on the left hand side I've enabled render preview mode in cycles obviously and here I've added in a sun lamp and so I'll just start rotating the, the, the light and start placing it uh, more or less how I want it uh, I'll also give it a name and uh, kind of choose a nice angle something that uh, I feel that uh, brings out the, the details of the face nicely, the features of the face so I duplicated the light here and I guess I'll just give it a name as well. So this is this will probably be the rim light. So I want a nice nice rim on this on the on from coming from behind there and I'll also give it a color. Usually I like a nice blue uh, color here. And um, you can see in the render preview it's already making a nice little rim there, but I do want it a bit stronger so I just ramp up the strength there. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good, I think. And uh, also the key light can be a bit stronger. So now that I have my key and my rim, I can also add in a, a fill lamp. So the fill lamp is usually a lot weaker and it also uh, tends to not uh, come from the top as much as the other two lamps. So it can come more like a bounce light come from below or so. So uh, feel free to like play around obviously with, the, with all your lights, but the full light has got um, it's a pretty subtle light, so you needn't worry too much about it. Uh, it's um, it's mainly there to just uh, make the shadows not too harsh. So I guess that looks pretty good right now, and um, I might be changing it up a little bit later, but for uh, shading the skin, this is pretty good, I think. So technically, I don't think it's a good idea to color the lamps when you're doing the actual shading, um, especially on, on a production where um, all the assets and all the shaders have to look the same in the end. I think it's better to use neutral uh, white lamps uh, as much as possible. But obviously, this again is just like one project, so it's fine, I guess. So I've uh, got my lights all set up now and um, I'm ready to start building the skin shader. Um, I did make a few off-screen corrections to the lighting and um, but mostly it's the same I guess the angles are still the same and so on. I just uh, made the, the brightness of the key lamp I think a little bit weaker. So oh, here I've got uh, the, the screen split up and you can see I've already got a few nodes in here. So basically it's just a diffuse node with the normal map plugged into the normal map input. And for start I guess I'll uh, start adding in the skin diffuse texture here. Um, I always like to start building the node setup around the skin diffuse. So I'll just add it into the diffuse slot there and that's looking pretty good. So usually I start with a simple diffuse shader and then build the whole Shader, the rest of the shader around that. So here I've added in a subsurface scattering and a mix node. 
I'll just plug that in there and plug the, the fuse actually into the subsurface scattering node and I guess you'll see why later and also plugging the normals to the subsurface scattering and here I'm just adjusting the scale of the subsurface scattering to something a little smaller so here is a RGB curves node and uh, I just use this to adjust the subsurface scattering input um, so this is really a cool way of working um, it's also a cool way of reusing your textures so I'm using basically the same texture to generate two different textures so, uh, and then I can yeah get more variation into the shader and so on so that's basically that bit and here obviously I'm adding in the actual sub surface scattering uh, texture and the subsurface scattering texture obviously goes into I like to plug it into the radius node right there um, I'm not sure that's the correct way to do it actually but it does give me really cool results most of the time okay so now I've got my subsurface scattering uh, set up and right now it might not look like there's a lot of difference but it is there um, I just need to adjust it a little bit so I've added in the RGB curves node to just bump up the saturation um, of the subsurface scattering texture so here I'm adding in another um, node that's the mix color mix node and what I'm basically doing here is I'm multiplying the skin diffuse with the subsurface scattering texture and this just uh, allows for a little bit more visual interest and it helps me uh, it lets me make it a little bit stronger as well so that's just in order to get a little bit more punch out of it basically and uh, the way you treat your subsurface scattering texture is actually really up to the character that you're uh, creating because um, each character will be different probably when it comes to uh, to the skin subsurface scattering and so on so I've just added in a little bit of blue um, to this to the skin subsurface scattering and just sort of trying to come up with a tone that I like um, you can uh, I'm sure most of you know this but you can just uh, control shift click on a node to kind of preview what it does if you have the node wrangler add-on installed which comes with blender by default um, here I'm just I think I'm changing the the normal uh, setup a little bit just so that I can add in some uh, extra textures to the normal setup Just adjusting the strength there. And so I'm duplicating the normal map node here. And I'm replacing the texture with the skin bump texture that I painted, which is a black and white map. And I'll just plug it into the height input of the um, bump node. And this lets me control the finer. Uh, pores of the um, of the character just uh, gives me very very great control over how strong they are so I really like using this sort of setup so this is basically mixing two normal maps together or uh, technically mixing a bump map and a normal map together so I'm kind of liking how this is going um, I'm not sure if you can see on the recording really, but um, there is a bit of subsurface scattering going on there. Um, I just uh, think you have to be really careful of not uh, getting it too strong. Uh, when it's too strong, the, the character tends to start looking plasticky and fake. So, and again, it depends on what kind of character, obviously. So here I'm just uh, changing my screen layout a bit. Uh, to give me a, a bit larger working area with these nodes here 
because the setup is quickly becoming a little bit larger now. So I guess I'll add in the start adding in the skin details here, and uh, I'll just mu multiply them on top of the original uh, skin diffuse texture using uh, color mix nodes. So you can see in the render preview there, we can ha we have some uh, veins, uh, and obviously they're way too strong. So I'll just bring down the strength a little bit. That's better. So I just duplicated that mix node and plugged it into the uh, subsurface scattering setup so that I have the veins um, multiplied onto the subsurface scattering texture as well and I made them a lot stronger for that um, basically this just uh, lets the veins show up in the subsurface scattering uh, makes it look a little bit more realistic so those are all my mix nodes so far uh, I like to just make them smaller like hide them to save a little bit of space and in the texture nodes I like to um, make them a bit larger here so that I can read the file names so um, I think this is working pretty well so far mm, uh, a lot of tweaking and so on will still be necessary I guess but it's uh, headed in the right direction if you're wondering about that mix shader at the end there, um, that is just like a broad control to uh, add uh, to control the balance between the subsurface scattering and the diffuse components of the uh, shader. So I like to have like one final uh, control that just basically uh, lets me choose the influence between the subsurface scattering and the diffuse. So here I'm adding in a new texture, and for this I guess I'll add in the veins, uh, sorry the freckles, um, and basically just go through the same uh, setup as the veins. I'll just uh, add, multiply them over the the diffuse. And I'm not sure if you can see in the recording there. Um, but it does add a little bit more visual interest and I guess uh, depending on how strong you make the freckles it can also add a lot of character or make the character less or more appealing and I just find it's an, a very nice thing to have freckles that I can control the strength independently and uh, obviously I'm always um, also um, multiplying the, the freckles over the, the subsurface scattering node So, um, here you can see what the, the subsurface scattering looks like uh, on its own. And here I'm just adding in the freckles onto the subsurface scattering uh, color. And uh, I generally everything on the subsurface scattering uh, color is uh, usually stronger and more pronounced. So if I have freckles on the diffuse uh, component, then I will have them on the subsurface scattering as well. But I'd have them like twice as strong. So, um, and I mean this this is already starting to look okay. Um, here I'm adding uh, adding in the add shader node. Um, and obviously this is for the final major part of this shader, which is the, the specular and glossy part. Um, so the add shader here is not actually physically correct, So, but I find uh, when I do it this way, it does give me a bit more uh, artistic control. So that's why I like to use the add shader for this. And here I'm adding an in a Fresnel node that lets me control this, the the glossy color here. So this is mimicking uh, what a PBR shader would do, physically based shader, 
but it's not exactly the same thing because it lets me cheat quite a bit. It lets me uh, make things stronger than, than they should be able to be. Uh, but that doesn't doesn't matter so much for this character. And besides, if it looks good, just do it. So here I'm adding in uh, another texture, uh, which is, uh, I'm using a, a math node there, uh, which is set with a bend mode, which is set to add. And uh, here I'm adding in the uh, the specular. Um, the specular texture. So from here, it's basically just a matter of uh, tweaking the values and the and like the color ramp for the Fresnel and all that stuff. So um, I, I've got all the main components, I think, and so this is just basically tweaking and tweaking until things start looking like like uh, like presentable, I guess. So uh, you can see the gloss is way too strong over there. And I guess I'll just have to do something about that. Um, which is actually, I think that that uh, math node has got issues. Well, maybe not. Actually, I think perhaps I should just use a color tweaking uh, thing to tweak the colors. Uh, the, the contrast and the brightness and so on. I mean, there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, I tend to favor uh, um, RGB curve nodes, but you know, it really doesn't matter. You can use a brightness contrast node or whatever else. Um, so this is starting to look a bit better. Well, basically, all I did was uh, tweak the contrast of the of the um, specular texture. And uh, here I've added in uh, like a, another math node, which is set to multiply. And obviously this is just to control like the entire thing all at once, like the strength. Um, when you're doing skin, I guess it's uh, pretty important to just keep things subtle. Um, as always, depending on the character, keep it subtle or, you know, selectively make things stronger. This is why I tend to favor the texturing method that I showed you in the previous video because it lets me uh, control each and every single part of the of the skin texture and uh, in general it just makes it a lot easier to get to the result that I want so um, yeah and I mean that's the skin shader pretty much done I guess uh, it's really simple and like uh, because this is a stylized character I guess that's as it should be um, keeping your your uh, shaders simple when your character is like when it fits I think that's a pretty good thing um, somebody once told me you know when you're doing shaders keep it as simple as possible because uh, just just do what gets the job done and I mean uh, I still have to learn quite a bit about uh, efficient shading but you know for the most part I think this this works pretty well. This approach to uh, to shading and skin shading in particular works pretty well. So uh, here I'm just adjusting the the color settings, like the the color management here, and um, this is again this is completely up to taste and so on. Uh, for beginners, I just re recommend that you avoid. Uh, going too strong on the contrast and stuff like that uh, and post-processing and stuff like that um, again keep it simple keep it subtle uh, you tend to get a lot better results that way so that's it thanks for watching the the skin shading uh, part of the series um, in the next part we'll be going over the actual hair the, the fun part the part that everybody wants to uh, see I guess is uh, the hair I've gotten quite a few uh, requests about that so yeah stay tuned for the next video and um, I'll see you guys later